Anyway, we're very happy to have our guest with us tonight, and we're very happy to have all of you all. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Grace McDonald, who's going to introduce our speaker. Kanye West, and then you're real no, nice. No, no, okay, Chris, right. <laughs> Although we do have a rapper that lives there too. His name is uh, I think it's Uncle Buck or something like that. A rapper that lives there. Uncle Buck. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm Thornton Klein, and I've lived here in Virginia for 24 years. I'm uh, born in Richmond, um, and and, and uh, started on my piano lessons at five. I want to mention that the books that these books here. Are, you don't even have to love music. I mean, it'd be great if you do love music, but you don't. Need, these aren't necessarily musical books. They're just great books you can read, like that have um, text in it and, and beautiful illustrations. In other words, if you want to use the uh, the uh, music in there to read or to sing or whatever you can, then there's a children's choir, which is really cool at the end, on and narrated too, fully narrated. The person that recently narrated, she's in a new movie called, and it's being all the theaters August 26th. Her name is Jayla Palmer. And she's only 17 at the time she, re she recorded it at 16. But she's going to be in a new film called Remember the Gold. So if you remember that, Remember the Gold, it's, it's, uh, it's August 26th. It'll be in all theaters everywhere. Mm -hmm. so, anyway, so um, real, real honored. The next um, is, just to give you a little bit of brief um, history here and everything, um, learned to play uh, eight instruments. I'm a product of Richard Public Schools. I graduated from Human Economic Academy. Yay! Yay! Oh, yeah. Good. That may be good, some people may not. <laughs> okay. good well, at the time it was called Human you know, Academy. Yeah, that's right. Uh, right? Yeah. And uh, 
um, get it right for Brian. And uh, whatever you think about Virginia Commonwealth University, that's one of the schools Yay. that I graduated from for education, right for music education. But then um, I was trying to keep this real local here. <laughs> but, but I'll go ahead and tell you the other things. I, I graduated from the University of Illinois. And then you moved to Yankee and land after that. In the middle, so. middle of the state, right in the middle of the state, uh, south of Chicago. And I got a master's degree there. And uh, then and then I went on to, uh, has anybody heard of, uh, has anybody heard of Rochester, New York? University yeah. of Rochester. <laughs> That's a great Eastman master's school. school. Music. As well as a great um, uh, music school, too. It's called Eastman School of Music at the time. Yeah, it was number one on the, US, uh, on the U.S. best, on the U.S. Yeah, Sparja, um, Calafrio. Is it that U.S. A lot of great world of news. Phenomenal. Colleges, you know, the college yeah, things. It was number yeah. one in music. And so I went to there. Um, I never did finish my um, doctorate, almost, almost, but... Uh, but anyway, um, and they moved on to Nashville. <laughs> and Nashville is a, um, I love the environment there. It's, it's really thriving with creativity. And of course, it's got a lot of things. I mean, I don't know if everybody knows that something about Nashville that, um, that of course, has a professional um, um, football team, the Titans, but it also has, um, it's one of the largest publishing, uh, did you know it's, it's big in yeah. publishing? I know, and I know, you, I know yeah. well, okay. my niece went to Belmont. Belmont. And music. Yeah, awesome. It's a great school in that. And, yeah, yes. and what's the book that Nashville is most famous for publishing? Where more of those books were published in Nashville than anywhere. All right. And the you know Bible. Does anybody know the name of the company? The Bible. Bible. Southwestern. Well, yeah, that, but it's, it's the largest, actually, oh, oh. in the world. It's called Ingram Industries. No, oh, Ingram. Oh, yeah. Ingram, okay. Is I mean, everybody uses them. It's amazing. Uh, let's say Random House and uh, uh, all, all the big companies... Wow, actually so send famous. a lot of their publishing <laughs> to Ingram Industries. Isn't that, isn't that cool? It's just outside of, it's in the suburbs of, um, it, it called um, the Burn Smyrna area. Has anybody heard that in mm -hmm. Nashville? Also the home of Nissan, too. Nissan. Yeah, Are Nissan. they still there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Big guys there. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it the next thing back is, is yeah, for sure. yeah. yes, um, just a little, little cap before I talk about the books and everything. Um, Yes, I have written and published over a thousand songs. That's a lot of songs. And they're published with all kinds of companies, uh, well-known companies too, like the anybody heard of Bertelman's uh, Music Group. It's, it's, it's big in Nashville, New York, and Huge. Los Angeles. It's called, um, it's BMG is what it's called. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so you know I, better. I didn't put on there, if you get your songs <coughs> on the radio or performing and television and everything, you make royalties uh, from, you can join a performing rights organization. It's called mm -hmm. PRO. Yeah. And, uh, and that is, uh, I'm a member of ASCAP. Has anybody heard of ASCAP? It's ASCAP and BMI and then CSAC. So they pay you not just for the sale of your uh, your uh, recordings and all those things, but they actually pay you when your song is on the radio and other, other things like that. Do, do you get paid every time that it's every used time it's played. to play? No, okay. isn't that cool? It gets, it gets logged and you get, a, you get a check um, quarterly. They give you everything you're supposed to get. Not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but loaded that. question, my friend. <laughs> well, I, I was worried about you. I mean, you should be paid. Good work. All of it. Yeah, yeah. sometimes we have to kind of... Uh, you have to work on them. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, like any, any large groups, you have to still... You know, companies and corporations, you have to stay behind them and kind of make sure everything is... You're getting your fair share of everything, right? So, Good. But anyway, okay, and then I've had over 150 songs recorded. A major independent artist. I'll give you some of the names of the of people in just a minute here. And then I've won Grammy and Dove Award nominations. My Dove Award nomination was in nine, It was in 2001. Um, it is. Uh, it was um, a, a song. Uh, she's grown up now, but but she was a girl at the time. She was 12 years old. Her name is Amber Thompson. And some of you might be in the gospel field and know about her. But she um, recorded one of my songs called Wonderfully Carefully Made. And uh, it was, um, it, it, it got a Dove Award nomination, which is really exciting. <laughs> Very exciting, really. And then, um, and then Song of the Year, twice in a row. My hit song is called Love is a Reason. You may or may not have heard it, but it's, it was back, uh, well, I'll get to that in a minute, but it was recorded by Igor Humperdinck. Oh, cool. Yeah. 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 And also, um, and, and Gloria Gaynor, she's the one that did. Oh, wow. Sang it. But she did, she did not, I did not write I Will Survive. Just want to make that clear. But, <laughs> uh, Too bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but she did record that song. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So next is 
This is, uh, recently I just spoke at the uh, NAM convention. Does anybody know that stands for? Does anybody know what NAM? It's National, National Association, Association of Music American Merchants. Merchandisers. And uh, I've been speaking there for the last five years in Anaheim, California at the convention center. They always have, they've invited me back uh, over and over, you know. And these are, these are all hit writers. They've all had uh, an artist that, for that, that I've had on, on a panel uh, <laughs> that I do, like on hit writing, songwriting. And um, so I'll just tell you a couple of people you may have heard of and may not have heard of that I've either recorded with or have had songs recorded with Gaithers is one of them. Um, if you look, is anybody heard of the Gaithers? No, we yeah. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know this. Uh, but the Gaithers, the I performed on, yeah. recorded yeah. on their DVD um, called Amazing Grace and How Great They Are. Those two, if you ever want to check them out, you can get them in Crackerville anywhere, you know, those uh, on there. Um, there's a contemporary Christian artist named Tammy Trent uh, on um, Light Word Records. Uh, then there was um, then uh, Engelbert Humperdinck, and then Gloria Gaynor. And uh, has anybody ever heard a song? It goes back a long ways to go, but it's um, Tell Laura a Letter. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Here's some. Well, I didn't write that, so don't. <laughs> <laughs> but but <laughs> the guy that did record it, that is famous for it in other songs, is his name is Ray Peterson. He's not living anymore, but he's, he was a big artist at the time, uh, well known artist. And he recorded some of my songs, too. And then, of course, you've heard the Manhattan, but they recorded some of my songs. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, they were great. And then yeah. Mark Chestnut. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Country Mark Chestnut. Mark Chestnut. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And those are just some of them. I mean, one of them, but, <laughs> but I'm here to sort of tell you a little bit about the books, too. So. so when did you start writing songs? Um, I wrote this song. I started writing songs very early when I was, like, when I was sure. five. And my parents, uh, they weren't really commercial. They weren't very good songs. They were <laughs> just <laughs> very mediocre songs, but... Um, my parents would have to tell me to knock it off. Um, well, first of all, we lived in this real little, this real tiny, tiny house in Richmond, and um, I would stay up late composing and performing. No, he was over in and, uh, and Franklin. Franklin and Street. Right. You could hear it all over We were in ham radio together, so, so they had a lot of So my stuff. dad told me to knock it off because he said, you know, they're trying to get some sleep, and I was trying to play, you know, until way, way up in the wee hours. And, um, and anyway, um, but then my mother thought, um, I'm very thankful for mom and dad for supporting me and believing me, but my mom thought she would be, get really worried to tell my teacher that he's goofing off because he's, he's writing and making up tunes and stuff, and he's not, you know, and he's supposed to stick with the program. And I was sticking with the program, and I was supposed to be doing my, <laughs> you know, classical tunes and all those little things. Out of the Thompson book, anybody heard of the piano? Oh, yeah. John Thompson. Dolly and Deer, Sandman's here. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I, I, you know, I was supposed to be sticking with the program, and then, and then and I didn't. And I kept making up little tunes. Well, they little did they know that uh, it, it led to me getting, you know, songs, get songs, and making actually a living out of it. That's one of the ways I make a living. There's other ways I make a living too. But um, uh, anyway, so um, that's sort of the story on the. Oh, and I'm also have you ever heard of the the uh, Oak Ridge Boys? Right? Yeah. Well, um. I recorded with Chris Golden, who's one of the upgrades, a member of the Gold right. The Goldens, you probably heard the Goldens too, mm -hmm. very and country music. So anyway, there you go. And to give you a little now this is this is on uh, this is was Golden Platinum Awarded album. Mm -hmm. This one was released in nineteen ninety one. Um what's the reason? It was it's a pop adult contemporary song. You may not remember hearing it, but it has been played extensively on the radio. And uh, and actually uh, we played on uh, one of the big stations that carried it at the time, they were playing music, a lot of music, because WRBA, you know, in, in uh, AM. But, um, but anyway, it was exciting. I want to tell you how thrilling it is. If anybody, is anybody here that um, either writes some song, songs or dabbles with it, anything, that tries to write some songs? Well, it's a real thrill, just like it is a real thrill to see your, your books in print and selling you stuff. But it's a real thrill also to hear your songs on the radio. Because when I was in Los Angeles, um, um, the publisher sent me, gave me an advance, a large advance to come out and uh, watch Engelbert, uh, well, actually come out, Engelbert performed in the Universal Amphitheater and performed a song. And um, <coughs> it was very green at the time, very, very green. And um, my wife and I, all the, we just sat up on the front row there and we were next to the, some of the hit, I mean, just gigantic hit songs. Like, how intimidating is that? You know, you know that song, We Lost That Love? Oh, wow. Uh, Barry Mann, he wrote that, and uh, sometimes when all the well, here we are. Here I'm sitting here. I'm a green writer, a real green writer, and I'm sitting right next to these people, like, and, you know, and then they, after, you know, they put the spotlight on us about the song, you know, put the spotlight on me, 
like he introduces us out there in front of all these 